Oh, the blue circle's going round and round. I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you, the blue circle's going round and round. <laughs> it's spinning. It happened again. It happened again. What happened again? We're live. Oh, shit. We're live? We're, We're live. live. Oh, Lord. We are live. Oh, here, here we go. Live, live, live. See, no one, no one knows we have a guest except the people watching our guest. And no one that knows our guest can see us, but they can hear us. Oh, snap. <laughs> it's like... It's like a crossover episode. It's a crossover episode. episode. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Everything you ever wanted from any good 80s or 90s <laughs> sitcom. You ever, wa you ever watch BoJack Horseman? No. Oh, my gosh. You got to watch the crossover episode. What is what is that? <laughs> BoJack Horseman is is this former... <laughs> I mean, I don't even, I've never heard of that. I don't know what that okay, is. Okay, so it's on Netflix. He's a former actor. I can't wait for this explanation. Who's on, who's on this uh, this old sitcom. Horsing around, and he's <laughs> he's just a horse, man. He's, <laughs> he's a, so Bojack every a, horse every man. every every person in this show is an animal. Okay, <laughs> so not every. He's, well, no, there's a couple humans. Yeah, there's a lot of there's humans. There's Todd. Todd's pretty. Todd's dope. human. Yeah. Why is his name gotta be Todd? <laughs> Why is his name gotta be the most random name in the world? Todd. <laughs> We've got a bot named Carl. Anyways, <laughs> on with so. How would you describe BoJack Horseman? How would I describe BoJack Horseman? He is a complete mess up. Complete okay. and utter, like, just terrible. He, it, it's one of the most in-depth and open looks at humans. Yeah. Is this, is it an animation? It yes, absolutely or, is. Oh, okay, yes. okay. And, um... Were you imagining some dude with a, with a... I didn't know what to imagine. I mean, <laughs> I did I... <laughs> You know I would what? hope it wouldn't be that. It goes into a variety of different just inner workings of humans, but in a way that they're just human. When one of the girls ends up on antidepressants the whole okay. rest of the show, she weighs a little more. Okay. Okay. You know, that Todd comes to the realization he's aromantic and asexual. So he starts an Aero Ace dating website. I mean, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's absurd. Uh huh. Is there a moment where the giant horse pukes so much pink cotton candy down the side of a mountain that it's an issue for the neighbor that lives below him absolutely <laughs> <laughs> but, it's like little random little random universe things that they hold on to that's so like hilarious the little girl that uh -huh. was on the show with him eventually comes back and needs his support because guess what first she went into music and tried to be all sexy and now everybody's forgotten about her as she's gotten older and she's addicted to drugs and this sounds it, a little bit like, like uh, real life, real life yeah. right? Do you do you think that the the show writers and the creators meant to do that? I mean, in was that that, one, that was intentional? Like intense, yeah. very so this intentional. is not just in different episodes. This is like the the, the show. show. This is like the how whole the, show is. the show is. Okay, cool, cool. It, and we used to call it the callback show because it's it just it's just constant constant callbacks. Everything's Whereas, a callback to yeah. something that happened like really? five episodes yeah. ago. Yeah. Oh my god, that. He decides who's he? He wants to be Sea Biscuit. No, it's not Sea Biscuit. He wants to be. He wants to be that other famous horse. I forget oh, which one. Oh, Secretariat. Secretariat. To act in the <laughs> movie. So Bojack Horseman wants to be in the movie of Secretariat, where of course Secretariat is a horseman, but he's a piece of crap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's layers upon layers yeah. of comment on Hollywood, and that whole world. Right. Right. But if you do it as a cartoon, you're allowed. <laughs> Well, that part, <laughs> somewhat. You know that going all the way back for me that the re one of the reasons that Winnie the Pooh is important to me is mm -hmm. the first mm -hmm. identified depressed character mm. that is accepted by his peers and not ignored or avoided. Wow, is Winnie the Pooh because they invite Eeyore everywhere. And if it goes bad, they help him put his tail back on. Mm -hmm. And even though he's a bit of a bummer, mm -hmm. he's at all the parties. Mm -hmm. He's still there. They don't go, oh, you're depressed. We don't want anything to do with you. He's the first normalized character wow. with a mental illness. Do you think that was intentional? I think chances are that, you know, the reality is A.A. Milne probably dealt with some depression or something. Mm -hmm. That there's some reason why those... That I know that when I write, characters take on pieces of you. Right, right. You know, when you right. look at, have you ever seen, okay, so there's a movie based on a Stephen King book called, what's the one where they, he breaks her, she breaks his feet over and over again? She 
he breaks his feet over and over. Oh well, it doesn't really know. matter. The point yeah, is so. that it's actually all the fact that he was fighting with cocaine, and it was hobbling him. Yeah, it's a show. It's the movie is about an author gets kidnapped. Oh, I know which one you're talking about because they did a they did a parody of it on Family Guy. <laughs> this is the world I live in. People know literature from Family Guy. You know what? what how? It, whatever. And the funny thing is, that's perfect. Because you all know Buddhism from Disney. Mm-hmm. Kung Fu Panda, it was you all the time. Mm. You know, you look in the scroll. Yeah. The scroll's not magic. You are. It's a mirror. It was you all along. Mm-hmm. Frozen, let it go. Let it go. We all relate mm-hmm. to this, right? It, it's... And not because anybody's purposefully even doing that, but yeah. because actually all of our, what makes us resonates with those pieces. Yeah. It's not, oh, let me put in this thought from this group. It's that wisdom's wisdom. Mm-hmm. So it just keeps, re- you just keep reappearing in front of us like, oh, someone had this new thought. Those thoughts have been around for a few thousand years, but right. okay, whatever. Right. <laughs> but it brings me to the pertinent question. There's a pertinent question here. Yes. There's an important question. Yes. Where are you from? I'm from Columbus, Ohio. I'm from. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see. I didn't see that coming. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This is. <laughs> welcome to the gauntlet. Uh, I'm from Columbus, Ohio, man. I'm from the Brittanelle area, in Columbus, Ohio, which is near Ohio, Dominican, born and raised. Uh, from the city, been here my whole life. I went away a little bit for school, but where'd you go? I went to Capital University for a little bit, for about a year, Columbus State for a year, went down south to North Carolina A&T State okay, University okay. for a year. But I I mean, I, I wasn't really focused on school. I mean, I was in the community doing different work, working with different <laughs> schools, all kind of stuff. And when I, I came back that. home, my mom said, listen. You you're gotta stop a, chasing that good work. Well, well, she. Well, That's what she said. Well, mom said, if you're not gonna be in school, you can't live here with me. Oof. So you gotta figure it out, yeah. son. And hence, life began. Yeah. Isn't it the truth? Yeah. It, it's so. I have this funny take on Adam and Eve. So if you read it as a manual on how to raise kids, mm-hmm. eventually they start to think they know it all, and you gotta kick them out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know this firsthand? <laughs> well, hell yeah. I got kids ranging from the last one to leave left in a bit of a huff, and I only press charges. But it happens. I promised if you took those things, that was going to happen. And mm-hmm. part of being a good dad is following your word. There's the line. Yeah. yeah. Because just like your mom, it meant you had to make that move. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a natural progression. I, right. I'm not saying it's as somebody that moved back into my parents' house briefly in my mid twenties as a single dad. Mm-hmm. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes it even hits yeah. the fan. You yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that I immediately thought about the fact of when I think of eighteen, I was in Thailand. I was an exchange student, really? and I've always wanted to go back to Thailand. Yeah, because I was running around chasing good deeds. That's what I was doing in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to save a hoe. No. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> dun 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 Captain Save a Ho <laughs> Well it is amazing though. All of those are the pieces that make us who we are. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That you know what, it's all lesson. It was all whether you chased this or chased that, what you learned was if you touch fire you get your hands burnt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That like for me, growing up has been such a there was a moment almost 50 where it all made sense suddenly I could look back it was everything to get me here Mm -hmm. to doing what I am doing right now Mm -hmm. it was the realization it all falls into place even the crappy bits yeah man if life puts speed bumps in your way Mm -hmm. get notebook and paper you're moving into a school zone you probably got stuff to learn Mm -hmm. there's a reason why you have to slow down yeah Yeah. and life will do that for you when you start going too fast you'll hit a bump yeah because you're not looking. You're not present. Yeah. You know, I, I look back now, and so my first memories are married housing at a college. My dad was a graduate student at U of M, getting a degree in architecture. Everybody should grow up at university married housing. Everybody. Sorry. I felt it. I hit the mic. 
Oh. <laughs> I, I haven't been hitting the table too. Sorry. I hadn't noticed. I was listening. That the thing about married housing is everybody there values education. Mm-hmm. So much so that nobody has a dime to their name. <laughs> not zip, not zilch. If you had the one spouse that was working the good job, you didn't live where we lived. <laughs> but you had graduate students from all over the world yeah. who all, the guy next door, <laughs> downstairs in his basement, had this gorilla head that he'd been working on because he was a zoologist. He was a graduate student in zoology doing his, oh, doctoral work on some insanely deadly virus that this gorilla skull had. What? <laughs> that was in the house next door. My mom will tell me this story, and I'm like, so we didn't get to see the gorilla. I mean, the first thing, you, so we didn't get to see the gorilla skull? Nope. The reason you don't remember it is you couldn't go see the gorilla skull because one of the possibilities was it might kill you. It might kill you. Because it's got oh, because it's got the disease. That it's got studying. the disease. Yeah. But yeah. everybody was like, the Mendiolas next door, you know, mm -hmm. the Asian family down the street, and I don't remember their name. I do remember this scar is from their house, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somehow so I fell into a table. So in case you can't tell, the next question is, what are your first memories? What are my first when you close memories? your eyes, when you go back in yes. time? Like what? What do you remember of Columbus? What's your first? What's that? You know what? I was a little memories, kid, you know? and if I could only spit on Grandma when she asked me for a kiss. No, I'm not that. <laughs> <laughs> my first memories are traveling a lot mm. through AAU basketball. Oh wow! Weekends and weekdays with my father. eating a lot, <laughs> spending a lot of time with family. When I was younger, my family was a lot closer. Mm. Right. right. My mother's cooking. My grandmother's cooking. Well, ain't that the truth? Grandma's cooking. And a lot of sports. I mean, I grew up heavy in sports. I was an athlete, so a lot of basketball, a lot of training, a lot of push-ups, a lot of running. I was always active doing something whether it was climbing a tree, huge mm. tree we had in the backyard, walking to the rec center. Always on the move. Always on the move. Kind of despised it, but... That's interesting. So, but, but I loved it at the same time. Did you time. feel like... Cause, okay, so my brother was the one into sports. Uh -huh. He's five years older than I am, so I strayed away from it. Mm -hmm. I, You know what? I felt like I, I, I had a self-esteem issue related to the idea that he was better at everything. He'd had five years more practice. There was a reason. It just took me till my 30s or so to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Not that you were Take carrying it. Not like longer. I was carrying around as a badge or was right, even really right. aware of it. Right. But then I took some time. And went, what is this all about? Right. You know, this whole, I thought I wasn't interesting to my father because everything I could do. Mm -hmm. Your brother could do. Somebody had already done. Right. Mm -hmm. He was driven when it came to sports. Right. Right. I mean, he was the guy that was doing two-a-days with the football team, even though he didn't play football to get ready for basketball season. Yeah. He was the guy going, how can I, you know, doing the volleyball training thing at home, working on his vertical leap, doing the – you can picture the mm – -hmm. mm -hmm. well, we need more squats, more squats, more squats, more squats, more squats, more squats, more squats. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he broke his arm, this, his uh, b -b 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 senior year maybe. And the proudest thing about it was he blocked the shot. He really didn't give a – he did not <laughs> – He didn't care. The fact he, that land, he, he, landed, arm, he landed straight arm oh. and shattered it. So not like so it, it came sideways. Break. No, it was the opposite of a clean break. It went down, and he, he'd hit hard enough coming down. Ooh. So he was in a cast for a while. I clipped his nails during that time period. But <laughs> do you feel like some of that was an outside push for you to be that involved in other things? Absolutely. I, I, I think my parents, who they were, they did it partly to keep me out of trouble. I think it was their way of making sure Nate doesn't do certain things or hang around certain crowds. So we're going to keep him involved in stuff. You. We're going right. to. It was a blessing, though, because it exposed me to a lot more. Well, right. So maybe some of the kids in the, in the neighborhood weren't able to see uh, Detroit, Michigan, see Orlando, Ooh. Florida, see. Uh, um, Kansas City or wherever the case, you know, wherever, wherever we were. 
um, it just exposed me to a lot more. But there were moments where I would just sometimes feel like I'm missing out on some of those moments that maybe some of the other kids had. Right. You know, maybe some of the... We call those Troy Barnes moments. I don't know if you remember Troy Barnes. Broke his arm high school, senior year. He was the head quarterback. Ended up in community college. Oh, my gosh. He's talking about community. Sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds Have horrible. Have the show Community? It's a show. No. It's a show. It's, a, it's about a community college. And it's oh, all I the people this was that, a, a, it's a, all a, the people that actually, life oh, I will do example. that to you endlessly. I will endlessly take pop culture and act like it's mine and then tell you the truth. I won't hold on. <laughs> my argument is everything we ever say is stolen. Yeah. Everything. It all came from somewhere. Mm hmm you know, so that I think of myself more as a mirror than like I'm having deep thoughts yeah. or like I'm yeah. attached to the yeah. ideas yeah. that, but what I related to immediately is, so this, the, the idea behind community is these are the people that end up in community college. Mm -hmm. He felt overwhelmed by the push mm -hmm. to be the star athlete mm -hmm. and he makes a move that makes it so he can't go play in college. Purposely? Purposefully. And that's why he's in community college. <laughs> I tell you what though, I can relate to both like both of y'all a little bit yeah. because I I didn't hate sports, but I hated the fact that my friends were all better at better than me at it. But the problem was I was friends with the coach's kids. So they <laughs> had they had the Sheesh. coach with them living at their house. Right. So like it was Your it was comparison a different thing. Wasn't my valid. comparison wasn't really I was pretty good at sports, but I I didn't like I I really liked it, but I at, at the same time like despised it a little bit. Mhm. Mm and I think maybe that's – so I try really hard with the nine-year-old grandson to figure out how to approach this in a meaningful way. Now, yeah. a lot of the stuff I read said don't, don't base it all on achievement. And he's really athletic. He's nine years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He runs with a 10-pound weight vest because he wanted one, so, so he does that sometimes. Oh, wow. He pull-ups, full-on Ninja Warrior. There's a reason why it's – everything built the way it is is built because – I let myself resonate in his space. So the odd climbing stuff is not because I endlessly climb. It's that's who he is. Mm -hmm. um, but he came to me at about the age of two or three. And I was cooking out back on the grill. And I had just built the first part of the clubhouse. And there was a ladder. And he came to me and he looked at me and he said, Papa. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. You know, what do you need? He's like, well... I've decided I'm not good enough at ladders yet. I said, oh, okay. Said, so I'm going to go practice ladders. He turned around and went up and down that ladder for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And he said, I think I got it. So we talk a lot about ladders. That anything is available to you, but comparing yourself to the end result is not meaningful. Mm -hmm. There was a day I came home. He had decided he was going to... I, early on gave him a controlled device but with a microphone I said you can ask this anything you want I came home one day he decided he wanted to learn how to draw and I'm telling you it was one of the best drawings of the Statue of Liberty I've ever seen kind of in a cartoon style yeah he the other thing that day was he was big on ones where you could open them and their mouth would be bigger and there'd be something in it oh wow so we watched video after uh -huh. video and he goes well Papa but I I want you to know I, I had to do it Mm -hmm. It took me a few times. I said, that's perfect. And you didn't give up? And he's like, no, Papa. I... And so constantly finding those moments yeah. to reinforce the piece that, because what I didn't get as a guy that was considered above average, however, intellectually or whatever, mm -hmm. it was never work. Mm -hmm. Until high school. Oh, man, that hurt. Oh, high school's a man, slap in the a, face. That's that's a kick in <laughs> yes, the schnuts right there. That's a ooh, one for the bollocks, as the British say. <laughs> then all of a sudden you're like, I, I, I've been faking it. I could show up to class without doing any of the work and keep the mm -hmm. teachers in my pocket. Mm -hmm. right. And then I took my PSATs, and the teachers started looking at me, going, "What's wrong with you? Why are you not trying?" Do you feel like having that background? allowed you to better approach your world that you knew that no you don't just start dunking one day you don't just hit every free throw you don't hit every three pointer until you stand there and you do it over and over and over and over and over again absolutely absolutely Be here's the thing that i love about 
sports, well, sports specifically, I can speak on sports because that's how I came up. That was my first love. I had a basketball on my arm. I thought mm-hmm. I had my initials. And a lady on the other one. Listen, I thought. Well, <laughs> I know what's up. I thought I was going to the NBA. Like, that. that's what I thought. So my, my focus was do whatever it takes. So the work ethic, the discipline, and those small moments like you mentioned, even if it's just like going from laying the ball up to tapping the backboard, that was a big thing. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I can tap the backboard now. Then it's I can lay it up over the rim. Then it's I can dunk. Those small moments of progression, you can take that, put it in your pocket, and you can apply that mm-hmm. to whatever to, to you know whatever realm or field you're in as you start to get older. And one thing I love about sports is, is it's decision based. It gives you a decision. You know, and I, you have to make a decision. You now. have to make a decision. That's um, interesting because both have of us to. lack that ability. So maybe that's where it went wrong. <laughs> we well, should have played more sports growing up, Ross. <laughs> well, well, and even even back to when I came home from from college, my mom gave me a decision. She may not have known that it was empowering me, but th- there's power in that. I mean, you're a young man, a young woman, whatever I was, 21, 22 years old, if that. And essentially, the rest of y- your life is and that's whichever you direction you choose. That is brings up a really valid point. The the rest of your life. Doesn't that bring up a question? That brings up a question. How do you work? What do you mean? <laughs> What do you mean? Whatever you think it means. Think of it. Think of these questions as almost like a Rorschach test. So that the questions are so simple (laughs) that you have to make a decision. You have to find what it means to you. Because for me, okay, so when I think about how do I work, Mm -hmm. it's been a it's a struggle. I work my butt off at doing what I'm doing, but traditionally, first off, in our culture, the idea of begging for alms or starting a nonprofit, note the similarities. That doesn't feel very like I'm meeting my responsibilities or being the manly man I'm supposed to be. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay and all of that. Mm-hmm. That I drove truck for 15 years before this. Mm-hmm. I was known for how strong I was. Yeah. I was known for how I could run crews. I was known for the fact that I'm the guy that walks up to the 800-pound pallet and just moves it. Yeah. Grabs it by one corner and swivels. A little physics goes a long way with people that are undereducated. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that... No, I struggle with the idea of how do I work, not just beyond this is my work, mm-hmm. but how do I define it in a way that other people find meaningful? They don't go, oh, yeah, he's working. He's got a podcast, a podcast with well over 100 episodes in under seven months. Oh, well, then he's doing that other stories thing with almost 50 episodes now in mm-hmm. less than two months. that we're working with a group on mental health reformation, that I was was working with a group on global men's work. I'm still working with a group on global men's work. I've just given up some of it. That all of those things are great, those mm-hmm. good deeds, those I'm moved by being able to create, not create, unearth the connection that's always been there. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't really feel like work. Does How it? do you define what you do? Why is this question so simple but so complex at the same time? It's the gauntlet, brother. That's the point. In in reality, they're all very simple questions. And part of the fun of it is it very much is a, I'll show you mine, you show me yours. Yeah. That we work together at creating a world where everybody knows, oh, no, we'll get out there right on that limb with you. We're, we're going to walk out there with you and go, no, this is, how, this is human. Mm-hmm. I've done this with the nine-year-old. These are questions you've thought about your entire life. Mm-hmm. More defining than who, what am I going to be? How am I going to be? Mm-hmm. So how do you work? <laughs> oh, I vamped works. for you, brother. <laughs> how do I work? Mm-hmm. Gosh. I don't know why this question Eight is days so a difficult. Week? Be- because for me, I'm thinking about how does Nate work? What is mm-hmm. the makeup of Nate? But then I'm also thinking about how do you actually, quote unquote, work? Don't what they kind of integrate and relate, though, too, at the same absolutely. time? Absolutely. Didn't one lead you one place and the other lead you back to it? Absolutely. That's been my weird experience. Mm-hmm. But I never, all of the things I did up to this point mm-hmm. never met my calling. They were the things I was doing in between. I mean, yeah. the last place I was at, there were discussions about, do you want to do this job? You don't yeah. want to retire yeah. from that job. And part of the problem was I didn't 
none of those jobs I've ever had were jobs I thought about, let me work this until I die and retire. Mm-hmm. They never fit that. Yeah. That bill. And then there's this. There's this. It's all of it. Mm-hmm. It's meaningful. It's what I've always been supposed to do. Meaningful. Yeah. How did you How did you know that? What, what, did something happen? Was there a moment? Is it a feeling? Or is it all of the above? Because you just said it. You know, you know that this is. So just because you're, you're be desperately doing. trying to get me off your question. I will tell you that about 25 years ago, uh-huh. I had Epiphany. Epiphany. <laughs> I'm working on a book called Breakfast at Epiphany's. It's like is a, that a like breakfast an epiphany, at Tiffany's? But as opposed to Breakfast at Tiffany's, it's oh, Breakfast at <laughs> Dink Epiphany's. Okay. Like an Epiphany. Okay. I woke up one morning to a friend posting about an Epiphany they'd had, and I thought, well, this is the right way to wake up. Breakfast at Epiphany's. People sharing the things they've discovered. Mm-hmm. I won't go into, I, I've gone into depth other places, but it boils down to, I was taking a walk in the woods. Yeah. Yeah, there was a bird that landed on my hand. <laughs> yeah, it was a mind-breaking moment of suddenly understanding things and feeling like I was supposed to do something, which I immediately said, screw you, whatever divinity is. I'm in the middle of a custody case. I'm in the middle of raising kids. I don't have time for this. Mm -hmm. Now, the momentous breakthrough then, 25 years later almost, exactly, as I'm coming up on 50, is after taking a number of psychoactive drugs in an attempt to go argue with God because I was pissed about this fight I'd been in for 25 years. Wow, wow. I went and looked in the mirror. You're not supposed to go look in the mirror. Don't do that. You're not supposed to do those drugs and go look in the mirror. I'm a go look in the mirror kind of guy. I walked back out two minutes later, laughing my ass off about how incredibly egotistical could I possibly be that the universe had been fighting with me for 25 years. Everything I needed to learn to do what I needed to do now took that 25 years. It was school the whole time, you dumbass. You were fighting with the universe. I mean, everybody knows the universe has to decide Friday night football games. I mean, on the basis you played basketball, there was more than one prayer where God was supposed to decide which of you won. I mean, can you imagine how much time God has to put into weighing relative prayers in locker rooms? I mean, ooh, they brought in a priest. That kind of, ooh, how do we decide this game? Mm -hmm. So how could he have possibly been having time to fight with me is my point. Yeah. <laughs> that I've, I, I've embraced the, the ridiculousness of yeah. it. And I ended up writing a book. Yeah. Um, I've always studied wisdom where I could find it. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a copy of Plato in my room when I was 12. Just because. I can tell you that it's sometimes it can be it can be really simple or it can be really complex like as far as how how you get to the answer of how do you work it it can be for me yeah it was it was as simple as i really like how this music makes me feel i want to mm-hmm. make other people feel this good yeah mm. it was that simple and it was it was it was a quick thing i learned it pretty quickly and i started working on it and and it, some people some people it takes 25, 50 years Some of us are a little of slow. just figuring it out. Dirt, no, dirt. Like sometimes it takes that. It, it, depends, it depends on who you are. Right, and right. And, and you know what? Short bus. No. <laughs> I, listen, I discovered something in 2014. I'm a senior in high school, and I told you all I had been focused on basketball, 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 wanted to go to the NBA, wanted right. to go play college ball wanted here. But really, looking back at it, a lot of what I wanted, what I was thinking, what I was being told was really unrealistic. It wasn't going to happen. Just based on where I was at, my skill set, it wasn't going to happen. Um, but I've always been kind of like a outlandish dreamer. Well, I, it, the only guys that get there are yeah. the outlandish you dreamers. Have to be, right. You have to be that obsessed you with You have it. to right, be right. that was, blind to reality. One of the greatest traits of humanity is we're stupid enough to do things that shouldn't work. Yeah. And every once in a while, it works. Breakthrough. 
<laughs> I could tell you guys about some crazy things that I have done for my purpose for in business uh that have worked that people would look at you and probably say dude you're out of your mind I, why did you do that when did you do that how did you do that right but <laughs> it all came together it all came together exactly so 2014 i am a senior at eastmore academy high school i'm a goofy kid i'm thinking about basketball basketball What's basketball. the third thing y'all think? Yeah. Basketball. Mm -hmm. Maybe some girls. You know, how to do a girlfriend. Yeah. All I just know is balls were involved across the board. Uh, no, 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 no. In some cases, yours. In some, no, see, that still don't sound right. That don't sound My right. My point that is. That don't sound right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Some, so la I, some ladies. Some ladies. <laughs> I walk into the classroom. Sports and music were created for just one reason to get girls to get girls. wow the ladies baby i mean <laughs> i had i had those right <laughs> i had a girlfriend but whatever we won't get into right that. it's complicated yeah it's, That's I, why I, facebook I, has that one right <laughs> <laughs> so i'm walking into a classroom we have to do these presentations this is a computer class but she made us do okay. presentations and my teacher at the time she says because I'm flirting with girls. I'm messing with some girls. She said, hey, Nate, come here. So I walk over to her. and She said, Nate, you know something? You have a presence when you walk into a room. She said, you can demand attention. You command people's attention when you walk into a room. I didn't know what she was talking about because I'm thinking I'm going to the NBA. I don't really know or care what you're talking about. <laughs> she ended up signing me up to do the senior speech at the senior breakfast. Her and another teacher. I didn't really want to do it, but... She but they, they actually saw you even when you didn't. Right. And mm. that's another point I want to get at. So I ended up doing this speech. And fast forward, I found out that I was gifted at it. And so what happens sometimes is people can see those things in you that you can't even see in yourself. And it happened when I was 18, y'all. I'm 18. So what did Nate start to do? I started to operate in the gift. I started to do speaking and workshops and all kind of things in the community for right. free just because I loved it because, like you said, listening to speeches and all that motivational, inspirational stuff, I love how it made me feel. And I said, it I got to give this. I got to yeah. give it. See, some people will get it and say, some I got to keep it. Yeah. But then the circles, so my argument is I want to give away anything I have because otherwise the circle's not complete. Mm -hmm. If I have, that means I want to give. That I joke then how can about, it come back to you if you get it and you stop? Then, how can you keep that? Yeah, that it lost, in the yeah, and it, and it lost meaning. You. It loses the piece of it that's the most beautiful. Right. It's basketball. Else if you're not passing, no one's going to pass it to you. That's right. That's right? right. That's I mean, right. You ain't hitting on the girls. You ain't never going to get them wrong. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> hold, 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 hold up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's, that's, that's true. Right. Exactly. You got a you're, point. You're not lying. You're not lying. The unshot shot never <laughs> sinks. That's right. <laughs> that it, it's so true, man. That you know what you give, you have to give it. And and once you have that organic, authentic experience, I mean, I used to listen to, like you said, I would just pull wisdom. Like I'm hungry for knowledge. It's everywhere. And Anywhere. I'm talking people at Kroger. I'm talking the man bagging your groceries. I'm talking right. the worker at McDonald's. I'm telling you, I've seen shows. puppies chase a bee in a way that'll teach you about meditation. That's <laughs> one focused little dog right there, like, zoo, 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 zoo. Mm -hmm. and, but it's just as meaningful. Yes. The, the, the nine-year-old teaching me to play out in the rain. I swear, I stood out in the, the, the pet store parking lot, and he's like, can I go run in it? because we were parked over by the drain where it was running about a foot all the way around it, but it's a good grade. I wasn't worried about him. I stood out in the rain and smoked a cigarette for about 15 minutes while he ran in circles going, damn, I forgot that. Mm. So you've given speeches. Yes. You realize what you've got is called charisma. Now, I fought with it. The idea that you own a room, it's got its blessings and its fault you know that it can be an easy way it can be i didn't know how to deal with attention from the opposite sex girl like as i got older mm -hmm. i wasn't as pretty in high school it's <laughs> <laughs> okay i was in at about 240 they called me fat mad on the bus oh you were, I, you were a, little, a little chubbier huh i came back 10 and a half months at 165 and those same people that pit called me fat matt 
paid me $160 an hour to take my clothes off at their bachelorette uh -oh. party. And I didn't admit to them who I was till the end. Really? They didn't Straight even know up. it was you? They didn't know? They did not know it was me. I just kept going, no, I know you guys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you look that different? It was that, well, I mean, they obviously probably weren't paying that close attention yeah. to me either because yeah. they didn't see me on that. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> that all I was was Fat Matt. I don't know that they could have described me to the sketch artist had I committed a crime. <laughs> right. I think I was off the hot girl Matt, radar. We know he's, yeah. he's mad and he's fat. You know? <laughs> we know, right. Exactly. right. That's how that works. Back then I had two T's. I dropped you had two T's, yeah. But, so you found mm -hmm. that as your means of work. That how that charisma motivates you and moves you through the world and the good you can do with it? Yes. Because that's, I mean, I have the advantage of having heard rumors about you uh -oh. and spoken with people. Uh-oh. No, not to that extent. I don't like to know people that well. Okay. Wait, it just, it just meant we had Armand in and we talked. You were on I the love phone Armand. with me. I love Armand. Hey. I love, yeah, I know. Dope. I peep the shirt. The shirt. He's I dope. He's, I love him. He's pure energy. And he, just... oh my, though I need new bracelets. Yeah. I've decided he needs to keep giving me a bracelet, and I'm going to keep giving him away. So that we were standing there the other day with a couple guys, and we were like, you had your shirt on. Yep, I did. And we were talking about it, and I looked at the guy and said, well, here, what you need is one of these bracelets. Right. <laughs> and then the best was, kind of Ross looked around, and he goes, you know what, I got one too. And the, now they both mm -hmm. have bracelets. We have mm -hmm. shirts. It's okay. Right. We don't yeah. really need more bracelets. Right. The hard part is we can get so invested in how we work. Yes that we forget to live, mm -hmm. that we forget to make time for ourselves. And you gotta wonder. How do you play? Is that the question? Yes. That's the question. That's the question. How do you play? That, so, no one can see it, but if you look off in the corner right up there, you'll see the, uh, the hot air balloon. Enjoy yes. the journey. You'll see the standard thermos that you'd see a guy taking off to the work every morning. Yes. You'll see Buddha with his hands up in the air rejoicing. You'll see a giant jack, like I remember the girls playing with when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Work, play, prep, enjoy the journey. Skeletons everywhere, because nothing's permanent. Mm. Bilbo sitting there fighting with Gollum, swear to God, don't get too attached to the ring. The ring will take you down. A little Tolkien for you, man. Bust out some Hobbit on you. <laughs> you. You know what? Because I have I have become somewhat obsessed with my work. Mm -hmm. Which started off from my gift, and for me, I have to remember that yes, I am blessed enough to be able to have a business with mm -hmm. doing things that I love and working with different people, speaking with different groups, but not to get too consumed in it to the point where I'm not enjoying the process. I remember mm. I, 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 it was a Blake Griffin. Y'all remember Blake Griffin? I know who Blake mm -hmm. Griffin is. Jumped over the car in a dunk contest. Yeah. Used to play for the Clippers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget this commercial. Um, this was probably maybe 10 years ago. And I forgot what the basis of the commercial was, but Blake, essentially Blake Griffin, he talked about um, you have to fall in love with the process as much as you do as the actual result. You know what I mean? That you have to the well, love the, 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 the practices. You have to love the, like, every second of it has, has to, be to be just amazing. as important. Yeah. If it ain't yeah. fun, quit. Right. Used to be my motto. And I try to, but not meaning that nothing, not that, oh, okay, so everything has to be fun. But invest your, like, so I used to go on job sites and go, what we need to do is tell a couple jokes. Mm -hmm. Gotta make it fun. Mm-hmm. My, I have a good support system too. Mm. I have guys in my corner who will snatch me up and be like, "Yo, we're going to to so and so to go <laughs> eat." Me, you know what I mean? Let's link right. up six o'clock or whatever. They're hard workers. Absolutely. They're purpose driven. They're gifted, but we collectively have made time to unwind. I like to do things that have nothing to do with speaking, workshops, boys groups, leadership groups. I like to do things that have no sometimes i'll watch a random show sometimes i'll just get food that i want to eat because i try to eat right eat good throughout the week but then it's like you got to give yourself some so julia childs used to say everything in moderation actually she said everything in moderation <laughs> especially <laughs> moderation uh -huh. that you gotta like right. yeah, do things in moderation yeah. but don't you can't hold yourself to the fire so bad you hate it all 
Right. Well, and, and I've, I've seen this even coming up in sports. Some of those parents who are the hardest, the hardest, the hardest, mm. the hardest, the hardest on those kids, the kids end up hating that very sport that they're having to do. <coughs> Tiger that they're having to yeah. practice. That they're having <coughs> to Tiger Woods. Begrudgingly. Tiger Woods. What? I, who uh, said that? I didn't know him. Dude. <laughs> I, I mean, it. It. it ha- now, that doesn't mean not to, to hold I people think that to happens. standards and, and to hold them accountable and to work hard, but. Oftentimes, people who get pushed like that, pushed like that, pushed like that, you push back, burnt out, and you push back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's the hardest thing raising another round of kid. It's like a, a brand new experiment. Cause I, I'd like to believe I got it right last time. I know how horribly it went wrong. Some of the kids turned out better than others. Mm-hmm. Yada yada. It's how do you stand back and build on the passions as opposed to mm-hmm. try and get a child invested in your yeah passions they want your approval Mm -hmm. so it's easy for them to fall into that yep let me be a little you yep um and my my daughter has the arrest record to show it did she wanted to be me it really that wasn't i tried to tell her that's not a smart move Mm -hmm. that doesn't work it really doesn't (laughs) that the reality is i I, that's a piece i work on with him that I work on discovering where he finds meaning. One of the things we're getting ready to do is a Twitch stream with a nine-year-old. I don't believe in showing kids that old. Mm -hmm. He plays, I color commentate like an old dude watching baseball. (laughs) You know what? Nine and 51. Wow. So that what you get is that, and our rule with video games, Mm If it stops being fun, you have to quit. It's supposed mm-hmm. to be a game. Yes. We play games because yep. we enjoy it. Yep. We don't. We're bringing the joy of yep. why we do this. That yep. I, you know, what I've been around a minute. I've played some video games, mm-hmm. you know, and but without, you can't get attached. Mm-hmm. And right. the the thing that's been amazing is as I've boosted is different. Yeah, he loves video games. It's sunny out. He's either climbing or running. He came to me today and goes, yeah, I went the long way around today. It was about a nine-minute run. He's working on stamina yeah. and speed. Yep. And which is, a, as opposed to him being addicted to what exactly it says, that's right. what he's doing right now. Right. I, I think that's, do you, I don't think it matters which route you end up there, though, because at the same time, you eventually found your path and have so much from those lessons. And And here's the deal. I mean, this is the path of this season. You know what I mean? That that doesn't mean that Nate will be doing this this line of work, operating in this way for the next ten years, five years. It could change in a year. I yeah. You know I what never I mean? could have told you what I was going to be doing. I no. There's no reasonable way mm-hmm. to describe the place I'm in. But but you but you know, you really can't express the feeling. But you know when you're operating. In what you should be operating in, you know when you're moving in purpose. You know when you're you get operating. that vibration. You know it. No, you get that you vibration. Know I know what you're really, talking about. It's really unexplainable. It resonates. Yeah. You feel it. That's, you literally you feel do. it. Like when I I try to tell people before, well I don't try to tell them, but I ask before I do certain events or speaking engagements or work with different groups, I like to go into the space before we start that contract or that assignment so that I can just fill the room, so that I can see the atmosphere, so that I can dwell I might in be there. addicted to atmosphere. If you've looked around a little bit, I'm a little addicted. Yeah. I will maybe, tell maybe you. Maybe a little bit. This maybe is just the same bit. place that in my worst depression, I curled up in a ball right where you're sitting. Wow. This was my cave. Mm-hmm. Ross didn't always live here till last August. Mm-hmm. And literally the January before, no, I was in a puddle. That less, like, over a year ago now by a bit Mm -hmm. i was at my lowest i'd ever been in my life and finally went to get help yes yeah and that timing was perfect yes it became what it was and then there was ross and it would you say that this is therapeutic for you what let's let's get one more question in go ahead how do you pray whatever that means to you right it doesn't I'm not attached to any particular faith, though I uh, I find wisdom in all of them. So I don't. Some people think meditation. Some people think prayer. I don't think the what it's called matters as much as how do you pray. I mean, I pray in your sometimes in your most basic uh, conventional way on my knees, 
uh, mm -hmm. you know, up against the bed or on the floor. But I found myself lately just talking to God just really audibly throughout the day, maybe in my car, literally speaking out loud, mm -hmm. God, I'm not in control. God, I know, I know you're working this out. God, I know you're doing this. God, I need you just doing those things so that I can really develop that relationship. Sometimes we boxed in what prayer should look like. No mm -hmm. matter what your faith is, so I, you know, I don't know what everybody believes and even listeners, but that's communion. Your prayer is communion. Your prayer is relationship. Your prayer is dialogue. And if I don't feel that I can talk to whatever your higher power is, if I don't, for me, if I don't feel I can talk to God then in any fashion, then how do I really feel like God loves me I've always, unconditionally? I've always been of the opinion that if I can't be accepted by my God, whatever that means, yeah. then it's, it doesn't mean anything to me. Mm -hmm. like, God I forgave can't, me. I Why can't, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh go ahead, Ross. Well, it's, go ahead, brother. It's, <laughs> Here's what hit my head. I apologize. Like, for example, I've always, I've always thought of God as the highest, the best version of myself. I know for a fact I'll never be able to reach it. It's an unattainable goal. I'll never be the best version of myself. But I know for a fact that I can strive every can day strive. to be closer and mm. closer to it. Yeah. I can constantly work on myself and I can constantly when I feel like I'm not there yet, I need to I need to take a second to reflect and and really think, okay, what would the best version of myself do in this situation? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Growth. Like, yeah. And and that's ultimately I mean, I think that is what well, even in Christianity when you're looking at Christ, I think people know you can't actually be Christ. You can mm, strive you to be like exactly. Christ. You can strive to have maybe some of those characteristics, traits. But as long as you're striving and you're pushing to live according to what you believe, you know, for me, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. that's I, so, like, that's like for me, I don't, I don't debate people over religion, over scripture. People have tried to on my different videos or, or anything. I'm just like. It, I, I have a theory. So this is my theory. It's based on the whole bird landing on the... I might have got some up, some up top knowledge, but either way. <laughs> my theory is, mm -hmm. I'm going to say it, from okay. astrophysics to Zoroastrianism, and I got it out without a stutter for a change. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're all trying to describe the same thing, mm -hmm. and then we're fighting over the words. Mm -hmm. A rose by any other name mm -hmm. that... I, I have trouble not looking at some of the wars created around faith and going, okay, look, it's okay, guys. Daddy loves all of you. <laughs> the, well, literally, the translation of the word God is what you're fighting over, and that just seems... That's, as as my faith has grown in, in what I believe in in God, that's what has concerned me is, ultimately, if God is above all, mm -hmm. right? We're concerned so much about the middleman. We're concerned about whether it's Christ, whether it's whomever. Right, whomever or whatever we believe in. It's it's pointless and it and it brings upon All division. Of those. Even even people who believe uh the same thing, even Christians, there's division because Endlessly. maybe your church has a different denomination. I was reading a thing today about how some Christians don't think of Catholics things. as Christians. You know, you get that war between Protestants and Catholics and Baptists and born again. and But it's true in all faiths. It happens everywhere. Believe, my, my thing is just believe what you want to believe. Because at the end of the day, that's, up, that's between you and God. That, right. I, that's we don't not, even hold the yeah. power as man. To, we, I can't put you in... It's not my job to Heaven, judge. I can't put you in hell. I can't really judge you like that. I have yeah. to hold myself to that standard, be the best Nate that Nate can be. There's only one person I can judge, right. and I look at him in the mirror. Right. That the rest of it, I don't know your struggle now, or what perspective brought you there. Now, that doesn't mean I there. can't hold you accountable. Well, no. I totally yeah, agree. That does mean that. But in you my can, sense, can. accountable is to. I can't allow you to do damage to others or yourself. Mm -hmm. mm. I, I don't. I'm not going to define something you're doing that's bringing love and joy as damaging. Mm -hmm. In general, I'm not going to I'm not going to define what you believe as something as damaging. I I can only do what I I can only 
I can only tell you what I believe, and maybe maybe that can shine. Maybe that can like, maybe we can figure out what we what we yep. believe together. You yep. know, like I let your life do the talking. Yeah. I, I can I can live by example. Yeah, I can tell people about HBCUs. I can tell people about college. I can tell people about public speaking. But right. until you experience it you won't actually really understand what I'm saying. Mm. I, me trying to convince somebody to believe what I believe is a waste of my time. I'm just, now if you ask me a question, then I may be I'll, able to enlighten I'll try. you. Right. Yeah. But I'm, I don't sit and debate with anybody regarding religion, regarding Christianity, regarding any of it. I, I don't have the you energy can. for it. I don't no, have it's, the energy. It's an energy consuming thing because I like to argue that I really don't know what happened before I got here, and I don't know what's going to happen after. Mm -hmm. I, I can't talk about that. I'm agnostic on it in the sense that there's no way I could possibly know, know, know. Mm -hmm. Right. So that all I can do is try mm -hmm. right here. That shook. <laughs> all I could do is try right in this space. Yes. The only place I can exist is right here. Yes. Everything else is not out well, of my control and, and it's funny that you said that because sometimes we can get so caught up on where i'm going to be after i mm. die or where i'm going to be 10 15 years from now that you forget about everything that happens in between then mm -hmm. this is why so right now in the christian church which is what i believe mm -hmm. in and what i've done some work in what i've tried to do is bridge the gap between what's happening now and what's going to happen to you when you pass away for example I want to talk about the hard things. Mm, I, I, absolutely. Because we can't come to church and, oh, Lord. We can't come to church and, and shout and run and say hallelujah, but then leave the church and be miserable, be depressed. Mm. You mean everybody be, on Sunday was wearing a mask? Like they put on their Sunday best or something and they weren't actually bringing themselves? Right. And, and, and so. <laughs> you know, but you know what I'm saying to we, some extent? We can't, we, if, if we're, we can't have that disconnect. We right. can't have that disconnect. You got to bring, you got to bring it's what you're going through. why we all feel alone. We all have a list of things we're supposed to hide because haven't you seen how good so-and-so is doing on Facebook? That's all fake. Everybody's showing their Sunday best. Of course. I do it. Right. I mean, I try not to do it, but it's, it's kind of like innately just who we are. I mean. That's why the masks are behind me. Mm. I did. That's why Hulk's. Listen, man. There's Hulk over there, too. I had to speak to a group before, and I literally, I had put on a mask because I was trying to metaphorically get them to understand that, because they didn't know who I was, that you really don't know who I am behind me wearing this mask. You don't know. This is what I show you. Well, and what you're going to get is I'm going to give you a note, and I'm a symphony. There's no amount. So Ross mm -hmm. and I have lived together for a year. Mm -hmm. There is no way I could find words that fully described who he is. A. I ain't never lived behind those glasses. I live behind these. Mm -hmm. B, as much as we've shared, yeah. as much as I know about him, yeah. you can't put people in boxes. That's not how people are made. They're just not. And I, for me, I don't even have – it takes too much energy, y'all. It takes too much energy. Like, Lay it down because you're selfish because I'm telling you, you'll feel so much better. Yes. I, it's like I've told people, you know what? Be honest because you're you're a narcissist. Help people because you're a narcissist. Because you know what? You deserve to feel good. Mm -hmm. You deserve to, at the end of the day, go, man, I did my best. I told the truth. I got nothing to keep track of. Let me lay my head down. I'll try again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean perfect every day. You're going to practice. Because here's the deal. Li I mean, life goes on. So, so I mean, you're, we have to make a decision to to stop or to keep going so we have to just keep taking it day by day you have to just keep going keep trying to get better keep doing what you can do keep i mean even annie told us she can't really live in tomorrow sun will come out tomorrow <laughs> bet your bottom dollar that <laughs> tomorrow what do you the love musicals <laughs> Red-haired girls with big froze. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. I react that way to red girls with big froze too. Red-haired girls with big froze too, though. Mm. Hey, can I say this on on the? What do I love? What do you love, brother? OPP. You can say whatever you want, by the way. Are you down it, with it's OPP? Hard no. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. 
I mean, That's I love, I love, part. I love life. I mean, I love everything that life entails: the pain, the ups, the downs, the beauty. Everything that goes down must come up, and vice versa. The, I mean, my wife. I love my wife. Um, you're doing this live, and you, I, I hadn't checked the hand yet to realize you should have brought that up earlier. I would have hinted and given you a kick. <laughs> Shit. What do I love? What do I love? So where are you sleeping tonight, man? <laughs> uh, man, man I, I love God, man. I, I love the place that I'm at right now just it's in purpose. In purpose. You, you know, you can just feel, like we discussed earlier, when you are moving in the right direction, um, you begin to attract certain things. I've been reading a book called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen mm. about the power of your thoughts and how it relates to your circumstances, your health, your purpose. Uh, I mean, I, I love God. I love life. I love being able to influence and impact people right. and be creative with it. Right. Because oh, absolutely. I've been graced and blessed enough to when I work with these groups, yes, they say, hey, we want you to hit on this or we want you to talk about this. But I can create. I literally go into it thinking, how can I create? What can, can I do I with the room? This message? How can I use the whole room? Some people don't know that public speaking is not just standing in front of no, people. No, it's not. You can utilize you the whole connect. space. We've been talking yeah. about whether. So I'd like to work a crowd with 10 questions. These same questions you're going through. I'm a little silly. There's a little bit of probably stand up to it. There's probably a little bit of ragging on where yeah. you say you're from. I've because of conversations, I've had thoughts about how I make that work with younger people. Yeah. I've had other thoughts about what else I could bring to younger yep. people. You know, that one of my big things is we can all relate to each other. We just don't realize it. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody for a minute. Think about that time you desperately had to poop and couldn't get to the bathroom. <laughs> we. Oh my God, we can all feel it, right? We can, yeah. uh, not like literally, but you could all like, everybody's been there. Yeah. Okay. Now think of the moment where you were somewhere where you could see the stars. Mm. And you were around people and sharing that and sharing the, like looking up and going, oh, did you see that? And looking at the moon. Everyone in the world relates to looking at the moon, seeing that face and whether it's a face or not on the mm -hmm. moon. No one, even though you know that what it is is craters, mm -hmm. that you can, like, deep into the night or the color changes on the moon, mm -hmm. the way it yeah. fills you with a, people connect more than they realize. That's what I was just about to say, and that's one thing I love about connections and interpersonal relationships. Are you saying you needed to poop? Not that part. <laughs> <laughs> I, not that part. Go on. I'm just but, messing but, with but you. But I just I love this idea that I can I mean we all have so much in common. That that's why I've grown to love this idea of connecting and meeting different people and introducing myself and building relationships because it may be the most unlikely person. It may be the person who's the complete you opposite of you. They could be 40 years your senior. You know what I mean? They could be 40 years younger than you. Uh the opposite sex, opposite gender, opposite skin color. But we all go through pain. We all go through joy. We're all one family. Yes. Mm, We're all yes. one. It's one world and it's one people. Mm -hmm. That all those. So our other show, our podcast is Where's the Line? Mm -hmm. After doing a bunch of episodes, I've officially decided I'm opposed to all lines. That I've found that no matter where you draw lines, somebody's lesser and somebody's greater. Mm. That consistently we draw them to do us and them. Yeah. Um. I look at lines on maps and go, wait a minute, somehow we end up in fights with people I don't know about, things I don't know about, not yeah. in the sense that I don't support right and wrong, but in the sense that it, it endlessly seems to, wherever you draw lines, lead to strife, yeah. to conflict. Yeah. No matter how many times somebody has decided that it's the right point in history to stand on the side of we're better than them, no amount of history has ever ended up looking back and going, oh yeah, that was right. Mm -hmm. Those people were obviously lesser. Good thing we pointed that out. So much so that it's a thing I, like, I've gone beyond just, okay, in some of the circles it's we pray for the well-being of all sentient beings. I had issues with that. So then I was praying for all life. And then the rain started teaching me things. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm just attached to this old divine thing and it's teaching me stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From top to bottom, I'm not going to decide which is the more valuable lesson anymore. I'm going to go, I don't know, and I've never been here before. So it seems, would you, would you say that you fear lines? 
I do anymore. I don't fear them. I just don't believe they have value. Mm. They've lost that. I, that over and over again, when you divide, it causes division. Right. We may have gotten into a math argument yesterday. I may have been arguing strongly with the fact that if you divide things at all, you are causing division. That the second you put things into groups, mm -hmm. I'm just telling you how math works. When you divide things, it causes division. When you yes. multiply things, multiplying is well, a lot no, more when fun. You, what you said was when you divide things, you're making them lesser. Yes, absolutely. So if I take five and divide it by five, now I have five groups of one. Is that lesser? Yes. Okay, good deal. You technically, as a whole, you still have five, but they're not connected to each other oh, anymore. Oh, see they're the five problem? Ones. Yeah. And then eventually they start fighting with each other, historically speaking. Right. <laughs> there were 12 tribes. I'm not going to say anything more to this. <laughs> We've done I, so well with this I see brotherhood. Both thing. I see both sides of this. <laughs> Absolutely. I see both sides. What do you fear? The only thing to fear is fear itself. Is <laughs> fear itself. You want to know something? It's true. It's a mind killer. I remember Will Smith said this. He said that he hates being scared to do something, that he fears when 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 he has that feeling of, of being afraid to do something, that he fears that feeling. Mm. And I, I would say that that's one of my number one fears. When I know, okay, you get nervous, you shouldn't do this, or this is what's going to go wrong if you do this, or if you take this risk, this is going to happen. That's exactly when I normally do something. Excitement and anxiety are the same energy. Really? It's just how you read it. Yeah. Same. You, if you think about it, chemicals. your hands your hands get a little sweaty. Your yeah. heart starts yeah. racing. Yeah. You start you start getting an uneasiness mm -hmm. feeling, and when you really evaluate your nerves, it's it's the exact same as when you get excited about something. Mm -hmm. I hate that feeling of of being. I know it's a natural feeling, but I hate the the feeling of powerlessness. Not powerlessness, but feeling but like something has control of you. Or, mm. Mm, yeah, or I follow you. Unworthy, or you know, like. So from that feeling, like it's caused me a lot of times to over give myself overconfidence. Right. Mm. Like when I was eighteen years Cocky old. Cocky versus confident. This is what I did when I was eighteen years old. I labeled myself the best speaker in Ohio. So on all, the end of my videos and my hashtags and everything was always the best speaker in Ohio, the top speaker in Ohio. That was probably a way for me to deal with those feelings of inadequacy, mm -hmm. to overcompensate, mm. to over oh, absolutely. express. We frequently talk about But it helped though. I mean yeah. it helped. We frequently talk about imposter syndrome and how it feels yeah. how it feels to step out into the world knowing that mm -hmm. the the thing that everybody sees as something that's awesome or something that's great mm -hmm. or something that that is constantly getting positive reinforcement yeah. that is not always what you feel inside right and it's not always like like you said that feeling of unworthiness that feeling like you're mm. you're out here mm -hmm. but you're not really as as present as you could be in that yeah you know those compliments that man i love them don't get me wrong yeah but you're talking about things I struggle with every day. Yeah. That there's a reason why our other show is literally the idea behind putting on a show that's not putting on a show. Mm -hmm. Talking about the stuff that's hard. There are days where it's hard to watch us. My mom and my daughter and everybody will be, ah, oh, you know what? That was, mm -hmm. that just was unwatchable. Okay. If you think it was painful watching us, I promise it was more painful <laughs> here. Right. Right. And we're back the next day. We're mirroring what we think based on our relationship is the way the world is met mm -hmm. that I talk about the idea you cannot lead by example mm -hmm. you have to live you can by live by example mm -hmm. that once you start leading you think you get to judge mm -hmm. right and the only place to to show is shoulder to shoulder mm -hmm. hey look at the only way I can change the world is into is to infect it yeah if I tell everybody this is what you have to do they will not but if COVID taught me anything you can get in their heads. Yeah. Infections spread. Yes, sir. So if you do it better, 
It's why I don't shy away from Facebook. It's been tested. It can start revolutions and civil wars. What if you wanted to do something good instead? It works for the bad. Yeah. It's, it's a tool. All of it's a tool. For the first time in history, we can all talk. The people, the adults. My argument is it's the kids running the show. That the only way, so all the rest of us, heads down, we're trying to take care of business, trying to do the right thing, trying to be good to each other. Taking care of business. It's hard to keep the focus necessary. Mm -hmm. The I'm willing to step on anybody to get there. I know how much money it takes for me to know your name as a politician. Sorry. That it's just a reality that the people in charge are the children that were willing to be self-centered enough to push themselves that far. You have to be self-obsessed. This is not a good training camp. This is not how we should pick our leaders. I'm at the point of going, how about random? I struggle with that, though. I mean, the feeling of, of the self-obsession. Of, it's hard. You know, because we live in a, in a society where, you know, you wake up in the morning. For a lot of us, first thing we do, boop. IG, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, YouTube, you see the person with the new car, the person with the new this, the person doing this, the person doing that. And I'm like, Nate has to be better. I have mm. to be obsessed. I have to be obsessed. I have to be obsessed with this. I have to be obsessed with getting better. I have to be obsessed with making calls, taking emails, scheduling this. I have to be obsessed in order to and get God to that next you. level. But. Yeah. It's <laughs> always that but. But is that really. Does it resonate? Does it feel like your path, like you're moving in a direction and doing meaningful things? It does, but you almost rob yourself in the process. Yeah. So the reason that we ask, how do you play? It's the one everybody struggles with. Everybody kind of gets work. They'll struggle around with an answer. Do you mean, what do I do? do you, same thing you did. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got some kind of answer for how they get grounded, how they kind of connect with the divinity or mm -hmm. the, the prayer. But I find over and over again as adults, so you're not worth an hour a week of just specifically, you know, you get to do go play with Legos mm -hmm. because we don't, I have trouble playing because I feel like I have to schedule it with someone. Mm -hmm. I schedule it with the nine year old. I schedule it with my mom. Wait a minute. The thing you notice is the person not important enough. Yeah. Person in the mirror. What do yeah. you know? What do you know? How many years into this are you now? You're what? Into you're life. a young man. <laughs> oh, life? Yeah. 26. I'll be 27 in October. Oh, you're wise beyond your ears. It'll be amazing. What do you know in 26 years? I mean, because you've learned stuff. There are things you're, there are things you know. And for the record, and most of the, the beauty is, mm -hmm. everybody knows stuff I don't know. I don't care if they're this tall. What I do know how to make kissy noises <laughs> <laughs> is that I I'm in control of most, but I'm not in control of all. Mm. And mm. when I'm when I say that, I mean different aspects of my life, not other people. What do you feel like you're in control of? Just business, as a side business, question, business results. Okay. How much money's in my account based on, you know, a transaction or a contract. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My body, like if I want to work out or, or gain some muscle mass or lean up, I believe I'm in control of things like that. Right. Right. But it's like the moment that I begin to feel like I'm in control of this thing, I just get, it's like God centers me and just puts me back in my place and is like, Sir, oh, chaos, chaos going to play its role, sir. You're not a, you're not running any of this. There was, and so it's that it's that constant struggle because it's like the we're universe going to universe. We're this fleshly body, mm -hmm. right? And meat sack. And, and <laughs> we have to we have to grapple with this. We have to accept. Some people accept it. Some people don't. It depends right. on what you believe, that there is a higher power, that there is a God, that there is a Messiah, that there is Christ. Right. We have mm -hmm. to accept this, that we are not in control. The scripture tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, which would. The uh, universe is going to universe no matter what you decide to think. But but right. then it's like we're put down here to walk, to talk, to, mm -hmm. to 
to to relate, to have sex, to make money, to drink, to smoke, to to work out, to exercise. We have all these decisions, yet we still have to realize the ultimate say is not yours. Well, that that for me, I like to think of it as all a collaboration. We're all, it's all that all it's all always work. a collaboration. That I bring the best me in the universe because the problem whether with that you call is, it the universe, the divine God, I mix and match I know, all the terms. I, I know that when I think of it. I think of it as, no, we're constantly working, and I'm constantly, I'm not in control of the speed the balls are coming. I'm, I'm not in control of those pieces. Mm-hmm. What I can control is my reactions, my ability to define how. Oh, okay, I can pivot. I can see that's an opportunity. I see every moment as an opportunity. It's a new place I've mm-hmm. never been before, and so I end up seeing more things because I'm open to the idea that that's one of the possibilities yeah. that the divine is going to go hey by the way pink and sometimes my mom likes to call it sometimes there'll be moments where god picks you up and puts you back on your path mm-hmm. like you were way over there thinking this is what you're doing and then one day something happens and it's like ow chapoom i tell you what i there was a time when i was in new york that i was i was skating almost every day and I was out with my friends in Manhattan pretty much every day, either Manhattan or downtown Brooklyn. And then COVID hit. Mm. And I couldn't go out anymore. Yep. I couldn't do none of that. I was feeling amazing and so good. And I was, I was, I had so many ideas about life and I was, I thought I had so much control over what I was going to do. And I thought I, I could, I could do whatever I wanted. Yes, sir. And then it was completely taken from me. Mm-hmm. All that control that I thought I had, all that, all that effort that I had put in, all that, everything. It mm-hmm. was just, yep. I had to sit in the house. Yes. And it, 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 it can sometimes the universe has a funny way, or God has a funny way of showing you, hey, you don't have any control <laughs> at all. <laughs> I, I think, and and I'm happy you said that. You know, this human experience is so interesting because. That can go both ways where Mm -hmm. you have the the man who is struggling with this concept that God is in control. So he's constantly fighting. He's constantly fighting. He's like, I'm going to plan this out. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to do this because this is going to be my way. I control this. But then you have that person who doesn't apply enough. Right. Who is just like. Well, everything is out of my control. Everything is out of my control. Well, that's the but trick. Right? You well can't. Nothing. So, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm not right. going to set any exactly. goals. I'm not going to uh, make any effort because everything's out of my control. And in a sense, it becomes self-sabotage. And what you don't realize is it's it's about a 50-50 split. Yeah. You have, you have some control over how the universe treats you. You yes. don't have complete control over that. You're going to get thrown things that you're never going to see coming mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. But you can still you can still deal with things you can mm. you can handle things if Ross, you Ross, take your time you appreciate it because <laughs> this is one of the things that i tried that i have since i've grown and, and matured and mm-hmm. and had a better connection with god and just you know went through life a little bit more i'm trying to just explain and learn specifically with different churches that i have attended or right. you mm-hmm. know some of the members at the church that even while we're down here, we do have control over something. Sometimes there's a, a phrase that says you can be so heavenly minded that you're uh, no earthly good, right? Mm. So you're so focused on I got to make it to heaven, mm. I got to get there, I got to get there. But your time here was really nothing because you just. I've always yeah. said you need to have your hand in the dirt and your, and your head in the stars. Right. That so, like. Everybody knows about Ohm. Everybody that's knows how you everybody start, runs That's how around. you start a race, by the way. <laughs> your hands in the dirt and your head in the stars. <laughs> that you start, like, so Thanks everybody knows that out. Ohm, the <laughs> Ohm, the idea of the all thing, right? Mm-hmm. People don't talk about the other side of that. It's, you know, the whole yin-yang thing. They don't mess around where there's only one-sided stuff until you get rid of any sides to anything. Shh, that's later. Mm-hmm. But the concept of Ohm is we are all one thing. Mm-hmm. But the concept of Mu, M-U, is that you are all alone and disconnected. You are both. Totally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like to talk about the idea of at what point does your blood cell quit being Nate? At what point is there a small enough piece of Nate that's not Nate? The answer is there isn't. Mm-hmm. That's Nate. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So we're both universe then, brother. Yeah. We're universe down deep, all of us. Mm -hmm. God? Right. Now, following me? We're and all connected. God is me. everywhere and in all things, but you are also separate and have individual... Oh, damn. I get it. Yeah. I'm a part of this. You're a part of this. We're a part of this, Ohm. Right. I think we can definitively say it's not an either or. No, yes. that's the beauty of it. Yes. I think that's I the think most... if more people accepted that, then we would be, you know, better overall, but you know, people are going to believe what they want to believe, and, well, and that's okay. That's okay. I, and so that's why I managed to come about it from 20 different directions. Mm -hmm. I talk about every day being a practice, which is big amongst, amongst the yoga crowd. Mm -hmm. um, I, yep, went through old to new and back again, including the books that aren't included in the other Christian faiths, because I did non-Catholic at a high school. Mm -hmm. that, was, I, that was part of the deal. That the thing that hit me over and over again is that it's all perspective and if we can figure out how to communicate that what we're talking about physics covers this too wow it's all connected and attracted and we're looking at a unified field and you're just describing God to me I don't find science offensive I find it awe inspiring mm -hmm. I don't believe in magic I believe in the idea there are things I don't yet understand that 500 near years from now, we're going to look back on medicine today and think we were idiots. I know that based on 500 years ago, mm -hmm. I can look at medicine and go, oh, we've learned stuff. No. What my father thought before he passed. So what he thought of me before he passed away. Oh, yeah. I lost him in 2016, and I was away in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I've struggled with where he, where that relationship was at. Well, well, and we were close. You know what I mean? But, it, you know, when you lose someone and you're close, like a parent or brother or anything, you're oh, just, you always have questions. There's always yeah. the what ifs. I could have did this. Maybe I should have called more. Maybe I could have texted him. Dang, I should have called him back. Why didn't I say thank you? Why didn't I tell him I love you? So you have all those things running through your mind. I used to tell the joke of, I remember the last time my dad said I love you because I told him I loved him and then told him I knew that he loved me too. It wasn't that he couldn't speak, guys. It was that he was raised by a colonel in the Army. Wow. That just was not... Wow. Something he said. Yeah. That... There are so many, so in about a year's space, I lost three fathers. Father, actually grandfather, father, then godfather. Mm -hmm. In like, all the, yeah, no, I, I don't mean to interrupt. No, I resonate deep. I Go on, yeah, no, talk to me. That, don't bring the room down. That, no, no, we can right all relate to you. that. Yeah. We've, we've all, everybody in this room has lost their father. Yes. Really? Yeah. So, so y'all know, what I'm, say, y know yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's tough, man, because you don't want to take that with you and carry that burden. But you always wonder. I mean, I know that Pops knew that I loved him. I know that. How old were you? So how old does I that was, make you when he passed? He passed in 26. I was 20. That's such a hard age because really it's not 20, in the man. sense that it's, it's your head's a million other places. You're running. I've had to. I've got grandkids that are that old. I've had kids that were that old. I'm about to be there. <laughs> and I've learned to step back. You're young, man. Because in that moment, man, there, there's, there's things you're chasing more important than me, and I know it. Dreams of a million varieties, some of them not appropriate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's what 20 is. It took me, so my dad passed. I was, let me think, 01, 02, so 20 years ago. Damn. 20 years ago and it's taken me almost that long to come to terms with it yeah. that eventually I ended up with wise things he told me do I have that one somewhere there was one day I turned on a movie and the first thing I got was it's time to get up Matt and we were in a moment I, he was right 
It's a movie that I've loved since before he died. It was my favorite movie, always has been since the 80s, a movie called Big Blue. Mm -hmm. And the, the start of the movie is the guy walks over and he's kicking the kid, going, come on, get up, Jacques, get up. And it just resonated. I knew it was my dad talking to me. Mm -hmm. The next one was Believe in Help You Can't Imagine. The guy's talking about his his kids asking, how do you, you, go, you dive too often. He's a, a coral diver. And he's telling him about the mermaids saving him and tells him, you have to believe in help you can't imagine. Mm. Yeah. And the last one, you know, was humans are like that, unpredictable like the sea. Thanks, Dad. And I, he hadn't been here since. He lives upstairs in a jar. But, I mean, the, the, it was, yeah. we were finally, it, whatever he had needed to give me, it felt, now I, I, once again, I'm not invested. I know to some extent it all comes from inside me. Mm -hmm. I'm not invested to what that in what that means. Like, oh my God, that means mm -hmm. my, what I am. For some reason, that was a message I found. Yeah. Don't be wrong. Twenty years later, I fought in that mirror. I look like him. I would. I, and I, uh, I'm listen, telling I, you, I, I, me I too. favor the Jamesons, but I don't look like my like people. Don't be like, oh, you look like your dad. That would be. I think that would be rough. I, could, I tell you I, what. I could I, see myself in the mirror. There are pictures where we look identical. Oh, man. <laughs> One time I looked in the mirror, and I like I saw my dad, and it's it horrified me. Wait, you saw your dad and you, or you saw? No, I saw my dad's face. Like, I saw my dad, and it horrified me. I wasn't on anything at all. I was just, I was just, like, I just. Kids don't I do looked drugs. At I looked at similar Sorry, to that's him. Sorry, the first thing that came to nah, my mind. Yeah, I wasn't, I on? wasn't on anything. Mine, I'm usually, I usually, I just, I'm I look, a psychonaut. Okay. But I, I don't really, believe in taking drugs to get high. I look really similar. Okay. I look, I look really similar to my dad. And I, I looked in the mirror, and I saw him. And it scared me, but it also gave me this comfort where I was like, okay, mm -hmm. he's still with me. Mm-hmm. I can keep him with me in some sort of way. Mm. And knowing he's there cuz you yeah. were young. You were really young. Yeah. How old were you when he uh 17. Oh wow. Well, I was two 17 years ago. and then I turned still really young. I turned I'm 18. I'm thinking that was later. like Yeah, that was a few years ago for you. Yeah. So this is still fresh too, huh? Mm -hmm. I would I would say I there are some things that I process. I I process death fairly quickly. Um mm -hmm. but it I said that too. I, it just dawned on me that I say that all the time, and then I, then I admit that it took twenty years to come to terms with it. Really? That's the oddest thing. I say the one. Th I say exactly what he said. Uh -huh. It just hit. It was like, sorry, I had epiphany. I'm I'm <laughs> not good. If someone says something like, so we can make you cry. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what this is for. Let's get our like, own for a moment, buddy. I, I, Are you ready? I, I can no, distinctly no. <laughs> remember within the past maybe month, my bro. He brought it up. Mm. He he said, you still haven't gotten over your dad's death. It, it broke me down. My wife, I was on the phone with her. Uh, what do you wish you'd learned from your dad? Beyond just how he felt, are there things you look back and go, damn, I wish I'd listened to that more or wish I'd paid? I miss woodworking. My grandfather woodworked endlessly. So losing him, what, what I thought about was you, you, simple thing, like a simple thing, like, oh, damn, I should have put the time and energy. I could know how to do that, and I don't. It's weird because, Dad, I love you. I know you, you, you're listening, but my dad wasn't a wildly, you know, successfully, like, rich man or anything like that. But he was successful to me. He didn't have some great profession. In fact, he could barely walk because of diabetes, because of mm. ulcers. He was a cancer survivor. Mm. But I've, I've always just thought, I mean, what did Pops want to do with his life? You know, what was his dream? I know he had gotten into a lot of trouble, and he was in the streets and stuff when he was younger. But what what was your dream, Pop? You know what I mean? Like, what did you want to do? Did what you was ever that talk thing? about that at all? No. No. I mean, we, we talked about times when he were younger, but we never talked about... Who did you want to be? Who did you want to be? Who did you look... I mean, I knew who he looked up to, but what what did you... How, you know... You were a great father. You did the best you could for our circumstances, but I know mm -hmm. this is not the life that you... That this you wasn't your plan in you your head. No. Your this head wasn't no. your fantasy. No. My father could barely walk for the last probably... Lord, he had a heart attack. I was probably... For the last seven years of my dad's life, he could hardly walk. Wow. 
And so did he make was he able to make games when he could? Right, right. Took care of me and my mom, made sure we had plenty of money, made sure we were taken care of, food and everything. One thing I'll never forget. This is the week of my dad passing. He passed April 9, 2016. He was calling me, blowing my phone up, and he was hurting. He was feeling bad. He was sick. He was mm -hmm. rushing to the credit union to put money into my account because he always took care of Nate. Right. And he pushed through. And I'm like, Dad, you don't got to go. You don't have to do that. And it's just moments like that that I'm able to hold on to. I'm like, this man, this man would have done anything, y'all. Do you think you were his dream? Yes. I, you now now that you say that yes yes that it seems like yeah I mean this man, as a dad I get it that I'm telling that, see I'm not a dad yet I have a dog but I'm not an actual parent I don't have a child yet so I don't know what that's what that love it's different is. it's not the same as the dog it's similar <laughs> you got to pick a name um they get into trouble and they all they get to an age where they all want to screw everything uh <laughs> just describe the 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 feelings though just give me i can imagine it's probably because I, I took my parents through a lot but well absolutely but the hardest part and ross and i've talked about this a lot is even the part where you're being hard or harsh that kids are like oh i hated that part mm -hmm. is all based around all we want is right. how can i push you in the direction i think is right. right right not in the sense that oh i need you to be this or i need you to be that right i want you to be happy right if this is your, I, I want to support you in being you. And right now, that may come down to don't do that stupid thing because that's going to take you on a wrong path. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we're right. We're making it up too. Yeah. We're just doing the best we can. Right. Trying to. It's right. not that there aren't books. We we know there are books on child rearing. Right. I even no, I don't. I never read a one of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big science project to see what happens next. But mm -hmm. that the most heartbreaking thing in the world is seeing your child suffering i remember the day one of my children i was going to pick them up and i'm being vague on purpose mm -hmm. and i said i hear you're using needles now nod of the head i said we both know this only ends one of two ways, right? Nod of the head. And then we went out to breakfast. It kills you. Yeah. Yeah. That all you want more than anything else is to make sure they're safe. I can remember that same child feeling better when they were locked up. Wow. You know they're safe. Right. Even right. if even whatever right. it took to get them to a place where you knew tonight, right, you weren't gonna get that call, right. Ooh, my mom was that way about my dad. She was, she was always like happy when he was in jail because she knew that he was sober. He was safe. He, she knew that he had a place to sleep and he wasn't worried about getting to a bottle. But I'll know? give you greatest joy in the world too. Mm. So one of the other kids didn't do well in high school at first it was a, a big struggle it, it wasn't it was a square peg round hole kind of deal and by chance one of his guidance counselors suggested what about we need to get him out to the vocational school mm -hmm. he'd been working on cars his entire life taking apart stuff since he was a little kid but the ability to sit down with a book yeah that he didn't care about and keep any of it, which just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. You could hand him a manual on a car, he put his hand on it and know what was in it. Right. <laughs> and be able to... Do... I mean, even to the point of there was a year where I read Of Mice and Men to the entire family. He had a report to do on it. That it, as long as I brought that charisma, that mm -hmm. speaking ability you have, Nate, mm -hmm. to bear there... Mm -hmm. I'm telling you from the day he got in to, got out to vocational school, never had a grade lower than an A, never missed another day of school, was never late. Yeah. I used yeah. to sit in this room. Yeah. Man, poor, poor guys in his mm -hmm. late 30s now, he's 39. So, damn, 10 years ago would be nine, 29. So, yeah, 
20 years ago, I used to wake him up in the morning at like 4 or 5 o'clock trying to get him out the door. <laughs> and he went from there. And it, this is those the pride. you. So then he gets into University of Northwestern Ohio. Mm -hmm. He studies, studies high-performance engines and chassis work. He comes back and does that for a while. Mm -hmm. But he's actually doing amazingly well in business. It was overcoming the stigma yeah. that appears to have been the most. The joy of seeing a child finding their yeah. their niche. Yeah. Dude, he sees you with purpose. Yeah. He sees you with, that's the dream. The dream isn't the what or the who right. or the why. It's you're fulfilled and that you care and are compassionate right. to your world. Those right. things he instilled in you. Right. That in the end we carry forth. Yeah. You know, it's. And see, I haven't gotten a chance because I don't have any children of my own. I've experienced it through relationships that I've developed with teens, teenagers, young men that I have mentored. But I haven't got to experience those moments yet. But I can remember facial expressions, embracing with my dad in small moments. I remember one time I lied to him. <laughs> and I later apologized. <laughs> I had took a Bugs Bunny sketch that someone had at the school. And I, lied. I said, Dad, look what I did. I did. He was so proud of me. I said, I did this. He was so proud of me. I gave it to him. But I felt so bad. I felt so bad, and I had to go back. This was weeks later. I said, Dad, I need to talk to you. I said, I lied to you about that. Da, 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 da. You know what my dad told me? He said, I don't care. I still love you. That's okay. And it, it's just like a lot of people don't really he have told those. told you he was proud of you for coming to him. Man, a lot of people don't have those experiences where they get too much comfort from their fathers. Mm. And this man was a comfort. Mm. I mean... That's my guy. I I miss this dude, man. I, I'm like <laughs> You're not pushing with me. I haven't seen a tear yet, man. <laughs> if we worked if we double team him, it should come out. I mean I'm nah, working hard not getting that, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a good mood today. I don't wanna leave here like I'm not really I'm gonna, I'm gonna for tell y'all this. If I start crying, it's not just gonna be your it's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be ugly crying. Oh yeah, we dude, we got that. to now. No. Come on. <laughs> We gotta Let's get together. The we'll, we'll get we'll get the we'll get. So the it brings last up question. an obvious thing. We've we've talked about your dad. Yes. You know, obviously, at some point, about nine months before you got there, we understand how you came to be here. But why are you here? To spread hope. To I be don't an know, example. She wanted. She work at one of the local clubs, or <laughs> she doesn't work at one of the <laughs> local clubs. <laughs> to spread hope I i'm apologize. here to spread hope man and to be an example mm. I, I just want to be someone who's authentic who's transparent who's just nate who people can say yeah i know nate's gonna be nate you know what i mean nate isn't gonna try to be anybody else mm. he's not gonna try to act like nobody else and to just be an example man i i've been blessed to be able to build relationships and really get to shake hands and lock arms with young people and teens and care about their feelings and let them talk to me. And I feel so blessed to be in that position. Mm, yeah, I think a life driven by gratitude is so much more powerful. Yes. That even on my worst days, so I, I used to do a meditation with an apple. Lately, the apples haven't been so great. Damn supply chains. But anyways, apples are in season soon. And what I would do is I'd sit down with my apple. Mm -hmm. I'd eyeball my apple. Mm-hmm. I'd see the beauty of it. Yeah. Now, one of the traditional ways of like bringing yourself out of an anxiety attack or something is you, you go through the physical world and give descriptions, or you bring yourself grounded into a moment. How amazing. How can you not be grateful you live in a place where there's literally good tasting stuff to pluck off trees? Mm -hmm. That this apple has crossed however many miles to get to you. It needed the rain. It needed the sun, the earth, yeah. the compassion and care of the people that picked it. Mm -hmm. All of that to bring that energy and that joy to you. Mm -hmm. How can you not be grateful for it? And then you take that first bite and you hold it, man. You feel that juice in your mouth. And then you take each crunch. You can feel it explode. Being right there with your apple. Yeah, yeah. A meditation just on 
being present mm -hmm. being grateful yeah. being grounded it's not defined as any I'm not attached to what does it mean but it reminds me mm -hmm. that that's the most meaningful the being present yes and how can I how can I complain I'm sitting here with Nate today I, I, how, these opportunities just I asked myself that question what am I complaining about how can I complain because we truly are in a blessed 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 position mm -hmm. we get we have the, the the ability to choose the ability if we want to go get McDonald's when we leave here we can do so if we want to go invest in whatever we can do so if we want to talk about whatever we can practice whatever religion I for me personally I, yes, I do complain because I'm not. We're human. Perfect. We're human, but I really have nothing to complain about. Well, I, I mean, except here's my thought. So, one of the big things with the Buddhist side of where I found stuff is the idea. The first thing you had to accept that there is suffering. Mm -hmm. You have suffering. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you're a bad person because some of it. And what freed me because I carried this around. Well, how can I not be grateful every moment? Mm -hmm was one day I was watching a thing with the Dalai Lama, you know, all enlightened one of Tibetan Buddhism, right? And so the reporter says, so now you've worked at this forever, your entire life. He was six years old. They start teaching him this stuff, right? So have you escaped all suffering? He laughs. Man, have you ever watched the Dalai Lama? He got a laugh. Just, <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I have a little suffering right here today. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> There's never going to be a moment. Yeah. Don't set the expectation that the universe isn't going to kick you. Mm -hmm. That once it goes up, it's going to come down. And once it goes down, it's going to come up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn things in those moments. But don't feel bad because you've got a little suffering right here. You don't even have to. Once you get out a measuring stick for anything. Yeah. You've already lost. That. Everybody suffers. I point out, like, my favorite. Is everybody sure that they had all the money in the world or if they were the prettiest people in the world? Go talk to Bill and Melinda Gates if that solved it. They are on... Mm -hmm. They split that billions. Go talk to Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. They had the money and the looks. Did, they, did that solve it all? Did that magically... Make it work. No, they're suffering. How you react to it is on you. Mm -hmm. What you learn from it is on you. Yes. If you're going to pay for lessons, yes. learn to play piano. Because you're going to... And, and if on occasion you can watch somebody else pay for some shit and pick up on that, <laughs> you write that down too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm happy you brought that up because... I mean, you can really do yourself a disservice by moving through life believing that I've got to be joyful, uppity, happy, gratuitous, mm. uh, uh, every fake? moment. It's, it's fake. <laughs> it's, it's not realistic, and it's not the truth. That's, even, that's not even the calmest pond splashes if you throw in a rock. And then calms and is a little bit taller for it. Mm -hmm. That's just physics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in, in the I told you I was the sciencey side yeah. of it. <laughs> I'm like this guy, no. <laughs> but but that's that's the human experience. I mean, you gotta feel it. Th this idea, and granted, I said I don't have anything to complain about, and then ten minutes from now I'll be complaining about. You got something. a list. It's okay. Um, don't beat yourself but, up for that though. But what I've learned is I can't dwell there. Right, mm. so I can go visit. Mm. I can get a room. I can get a little motel, maybe for the night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I can't set up residence and live there. It's okay yeah. to not be okay, right. <laughs> but it's not okay <laughs> to, to stay, stay that way. way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. They used to preach that. They used to preach that at the the. That's what the meetings. group therapy man. They're really? all about that all day long. Yeah. yeah. It's okay to be okay. It's, it's okay, okay to not be okay. To not be okay but, but it's not it's okay, not to, okay stay to stay that way. Yeah. It's it's but it's truth. The weirdest thing was in that world. What you realized was, why didn't they teach us this stuff? Mm -hmm. There was a, there's a great guy that uh, Dr. Lynch, Professor Lynch. It's a a TED talk, and what he talks about is grief. 
And what he points out is if your two-year-old, three-year-old gets a cut, they immediately come looking for a Band-Aid because they know what to do. Yeah. Hey, newsflash, we know how to deal with grief and stuff, too. We just don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, you know what, like, hey, by the way, we work on this, we work on doing that. Yep. You know what? So why is that not in the schools? <laughs> why is that not part of the packet we're given? I don't believe in, I don't think schools should teach us what to know. They should teach us how to learn. Mm-hmm. That's what's powerful. Mm-hmm. That's where you create discourse. And I think we're finally at a moment where we can do that. That education-wise, the combination of what we learned from COVID, um, the ability to use tablets in a meaningful way or laptops in a meaningful way that allows children in math or English to excel or not, as the case may be, but not feel alone because they're working in a world where they know there are other classmates as as opposed to feeling like they're special or not special but still in a classroom setting with proctors and you've got kind of a more of co- there are parts that are more linked to age. Yeah. And there are parts though where we need to let the fish swim and the monkeys climb. Mm-hmm. Just to steal all my words from everywhere I can and mash <laughs> them together in a meaningful <laughs> way. Sounds good though. So what do you think, Nate? You braved the gauntlet. The full yep. 10 questions. That's all 10 questions. Yeah. You've officially yeah. been there and back. You made it. Ooh. They do get harder. They do kind of get harder, though, don't they? They do, and I feel like as as the conversation went on, it got, like, quote-unquote, deeper and deeper mm-hmm. and heavier and heavier. Yeah. Um, open and open and connected and connected, and yeah. I feel it. I love it. I, You know, the amazing thing is how strong this energy, when you're talking to a guy in Australia or Nigeria, it feels just the same. Wow, wow. And you can feel it. We're right here with you. Right. And how do I pull that off? How, if we weren't always connected, how does it work across the world? Mm. How can I feel like this, chatting with somebody, asking these same three, same ten questions over three days? Because if we actively share space with each other, it's meaningful. Mm-hmm. No matter where we are. I like to, there was a study in D.C., You put a 1,000 people meditating on peace in the middle of D.C., the crime rate drops by 25%. Really? Go talk to the D.C. police. They were involved in the study. At first, they scoffed it off, and then they're like, well, okay, why not? Crime drops by 25%. It's how it works. Go watch Three Days of Peace, Love, and Happiness, the the Woodstock movie, Mm -hmm. and tell me those crotchety old farmers shouldn't be bitching about those hippies. The energy's too powerful, man. They're all happy. They're all talking about how amazing they are. Mm-hmm. What if we put on a global concert? He how would that, that work? He wants to put on a concert called Livestock. Live Aid meets Woodstock. Yeah. Livestock. Three days of free range peace and love. May, it may be an animal farm reference. There's a possibility that there may be an animal farm reference in there. How somewhere. would this global concert work? Well, Live Aid worked. We pulled it off once. We played music all over the globe and rotated for three days. So you basically rotate around to different locations where you're having concerts. And it's easy. Watch me do you, a 24 hour show on Labor Day. And you put it on the same channel and you just do oh, it. Oh, I see. Days. I see. Wow. Yeah. And the funny part was everybody was so into it, it showed on every channel. This was we were trying to raise money for um, hunger in Africa. Bob Geldof of the Boomtown Rats. Also, if you ever watch the Pink Floyd The Wall movie, he's the guy that plays Pink. Shaves off his eyebrows and slits his It's really... Same guy did Live Aid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was the Do They Know It's Christmas After All... Uh, what was the American one? Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Uh, we are, we are the, the world. world. That one. We are the people. We are the, That's... Is it... We are the I'm, children. I'm, I'm too overly. <sighs> if I go like this, it's everyone. Know it's Ray Charles. It's Ray it's Charles got, at the beginning. It's going. got Ray we Charles. It's got Michael world. Jackson. It's got. Uh, I remember I had to Lionel sing that Richie. in summer camp. Yeah. We had to sing that. Really? Yeah. The whole point it's, was it's funny because the, the, the camp I'm one of the camps I'm working with now. When I was younger, at the conclusion of the camp, there was this man who taught us that song we all had to like sing it as a performance or something okay. and that man was bob geldoff uh. 
<laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy how things come full circle. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You never know. Right. Well, you we are know. at a moment in history that's never existed before. Mm-hmm. We can all talk to each other. Even when we did that before, we couldn't all talk to each other. The corporations had to get together and do it. MTV was the big wig behind it. Push mm-hmm. hard. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and every artist you knew from the 80s was there, including like groups getting back together to perform wow. and you know that it was a who was it um phil collins i think played in oh, australia the united awesome. kingdom and the united states so he was really pretty he did the jump on a plane like i do a show here jump on a plane do a show there jump on a plane do a show on another continent wow that everybody was into it it was a big thing yeah i think it's time the adults talk the children have been running this place too long Make it's it my happen. Thought. Think you can make it happen? I just keep talking about it. It will. Yeah. Keep talking. Keep. I, that hip hop guy I was telling do. you about from the seventies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Reggie's all about it, man. He's like the hippies had it right. Hip hop guy. Hip hop guy. From the seventies. Late seventies, because there wasn't yes. hip hop before that. You know, he had mm-hmm. to kind of invent that stuff. <laughs> what's then. his the, What's his name? Reggie uh, Reg Reggie. Reggie Reggie of, of the Crash Crew. I don't know who that is. It he. What's play, the big song? Uh, the big. Uh, I'll, I'll have to send it. to well, you. Well, then there's on the radio. It's, it's yeah. There's on the radio. And we there's, come to. There's a couple different. There's a couple different hits. Like they got they got a a, okay. a couple of okay. the first. Yeah. The first hits, of rap. He, the, like the, the first few hits. On the radio yeah. was number one in the New York market for I forget how many weeks. He told me like. So 36. he's big time. He's. You mean the guy running tours? Hip hop tours. He's running in New Hush York tours with in, Curtis um, Blow it's and hip hop stuff. Yeah. The oh, other guys okay. so, from okay. the Fabulous okay. Five, and they okay. liked it. Their yeah. point is they're still here and they want to make music. Wow. How old is this gentleman? Fifty nine. That's it. That's it, babe. He was seventeen. He was seventeen when he, when he hit started, num- yeah. when he signed his first one. Yeah, I, the best is listening to him. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, because he's got he's got deeper voice now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bridge zone, you know. It's like, wait a minute, how old were you? He's like, I was 17. Wow, that's so He lived, dumb, okay, man. so what it was was he lived in the building with Mike and Dave. Mike and Dave are the first guys that stamp out any records. And then I don't remember if they start Sugar Hill or if somebody else starts Sugar Hill. I'd have to go look into the mm-hmm. history a little more. But so he's in the right apartment building in the projects. And they're letting everybody play with the equipment. Mm-hmm. Tell me that didn't resonate with my ass. Because you got to understand the story behind our studio. Yeah. When Ross moved in, we had eventually, we didn't even have that yet. We had two USB mics. Not All we, this stuff you see here wasn't here. Not, not that Pretty we recorded much. anything on USB mic. That wasn't there. The back corner wasn't there yet. Yeah, it wasn't. The, the back corner got built because there were so many kids in here playing Dungeons and Dragons. I need somewhere else for them to sit. <laughs> Straight up. I, that's the truth. And so... Shoot, I even sat up there. He sat up there. <laughs> it was pretty fun. We never used the USB mics. Yeah. There are probably 10 plus mics in here now. Mm-hmm. Some of them were given to us. Some of them, my 1976 ones still don't work. But anyways, yeah, we'll cross that bridge someday. We'll, we'll test it. Maybe we'll get it out and test it. We'll one have day. to. Yeah. 1976. Yeah, so I had to go get it. It was 20 bucks. Wow. <laughs> it was a nice mic. Was. <laughs> <laughs> That came from a pastor on the west side. The twenty, the twenty channel board. Wow. I have a tendency to look at Craigslist and let the universe just. It, it somehow I end up in the right place at the right moments. It was one hundred and five dollars. I could sell it right now for between three and four hundred. He was upgrading the Zoom stuff for his his church. Mm-hmm. He wanted somebody to get it that was going to use it. It was there when I needed it to be there, and yeah, it happened to be where I found it. Mm-hmm. The big one a couple weeks ago was one of the TVs in the house was dead. You're going, how can this story be meaningful to you guys moving forward? I mean, that changed our world. We always knew we were a studio, not a podcast. Yeah. No yeah. podcast ever went out without this. Yeah. This became part of who we It's It's in every picture. You see it. This is yep. who we are. Yep. So it... The last one, though, was, so this TV went bad. 
The wife's TV upstairs. You don't want to piss off the wife. It was an identical TV to the TV I had down here, but she knew how much we used the TV as part of our business. <laughs> Got her bamboozled. Um, <laughs> but so I began looking, mm-hmm. and I was not willing to pay more than $100 for a 55-inch TV. That was the amount I decided I was going after. Okay, okay. And over the last com- couple of months, much to her chagrin, I'd chased a couple but never gotten them. She'd come to me with a, well, let's bid on this one. It's at 135 and we can bid one. No, I don't do that bid thing. So in the end, I ended up buying the 55-inch Samsung in front of you, the 37-inch LG in Ross's room, and there's another 32-inch Samsung upstairs. Don't get me wrong. This is old school 4K, and it's even got a couple picture problems that I'm not worried about. Yep. It's got an Amazon Fire Stick on it. The LG has done well by you? Yeah. And, I mean, it seems silly not to buy the 32. Let me explain why. My total expense, I know I said I'd spend 100 on the 55-inch. I spent a total of 80 on those three TVs, 50 for the 55, 20 for the 37, and 10 for the 32. How? I looked in the right moment. It was on Craigslist. I answered. He said, yeah, I've got two more TVs. I said, oh, really? Because I called him well, or texted him, emailed, whichever thing Craigslist mm-hmm. had set up. That It depends on how you set up your ad. Yeah. Because um, he'd listed this Samsung 55, but not smart. You know, we wanted everybody to know this is not a smart TV. Though it actually has some capabilities and I could wire it into the Internet, but it's not. Mm-hmm. I've used Fire Sticks. We've got Roku devices. I knew that my wife would deal better with a Roku TV, so my Roku TV went upstairs so that she would not complain about having to deal with any difficulties. She swore up and down that was my plan all along to get the better TV downstairs. I want you on the record it's to say It's funny that, that this TV it has... It does have technical it has, issues. I was going to say it has technical so difficulties. No <laughs> this was my plan. Yeah, we ended up... Line sometimes. Yeah. Not when kids aren't playing video games. But anyways... <laughs> It may be other problems. Maybe we get direct feed. But I, I called the guy, and he said, I have these other two TVs if you want to look at them. I made sure I got 100 bucks out. I was broke. Don't get me wrong. That left me on nickels. And I ain't joking. Nickels. But it was the moment. Wow. Never buy a pig in a poke. Most of the stuff I've built is built out of things people didn't want. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually the garage door comes off and the front door of the studio is two, it's the size of a double door and glass and there's a beautiful glass door. And yeah, no, somebody was giving that away. I went and got it. Wow. You saw the pond in the other room. That's pallets. You build the square, you drop the thing in. Mm -hmm. It's not, and then you, you find longer pieces of wood to make the front pretty and you can paint it or do whatever you want. You can, but all of that was stuff that I scavenged off pallets too. I was in trucking. Yeah. So I had the ability to pick the good ones. Right. Don't get me wrong. I right. will say I think we should end the show. <laughs> I think we should turn off the, you officially the, the Nate. Button. We have you run have the longest show it. we've ever run. <laughs> yes. Really? That we've run a full two hours <laughs> that I, I guess that that's we we've made history. Yeah made we history. did. No we're gonna make we more did. I'm not it's complaining. Part, no. I'm not yeah. complaining. There's more history coming. Oh yeah for sure. For sure. Ladies and gents, more of you got anything you want to shout out before oh, yeah. we go, what, real anything quick? Anything you want to plug? Uh, listen, please, if you can, go follow me on IG. My Instagram is uh, Nate Jamison Speaks. Uh, my YouTube channel is Nate Jamison Speaks. You can follow me on Twitter at Speak and Nate Speak. My Facebook is Nate Jamison, I believe. But just stay connected with me. You can shoot me an email at info at Jameson Consulting Group LLC.com. If you want to talk, if you just want to meet me, if you want to connect, if you have questions, let's talk. Let's get plugged in. Uh, yeah. Connection. That's it. Connections. End, Those relationships. Connect- Those relationships. Have you relationships. met my friends? Have you met my friend? Right. It's, it's it, all, if all day long, all you say is, Have you met my friends? Mm-hmm. Until one day somebody goes, Yeah, yeah, I have. Yep. Yep. I'm going to take that with me. <laughs> Y'all give me some nuggets to take with me today. <laughs> um, madisms. Madisms. Somebody that'll text me every one and go, I miss the madisms. I haven't heard any madisms in a while. <laughs> it's all just, it comes in one side and goes out the other. 